So I told you guys I wasn't losing the whole PC backdrop. I have a few of them actually. Finally get to have all those PCs I've been building over the years actually do something. What's up guys, Jace Two Cents here, and you might have seen my 1800X build featuring this guy right here. Uh, you can watch that in this little card that's gonna pop out where I put together this custom rigid tubing build with my dual Titan X Maxwell cards. It turned out really, really good. And obviously when I moved into the studio here, I planned on building brand new systems for this place. And I'm still gonna do that, but I figured a lot of tech YouTubers, myself included, have done a fantastic job at talking about how good Ryzen is. And most of us have showed some benchmark numbers in gaming, but very few people actually put their money where their mouth is and have decided to use Ryzen for their daily workflows to truly experience it and get literally the most hands-on experience that you possibly can. It's easy for us to talk about how good it is for content creators, but it's another thing to actually turn it into your content creator workhorse and then you can get a real good feel of how it really is. So what I'm gonna do for the next 30 days is I'm going to use only this 1800X system for making the videos that you guys are watching now. In fact, by the time you watch this video, it will have already been rendered on this system. Now to get this experiment kind of started, I wanna, I'm gonna be doing some periodical check-ins as well. Uh, I'm gonna give you some live demo right now of what editing is like on this rig, uh, but I'm also going to take my 5960X test bench over here, which has 32 gigabytes of Dominator, Dominator Platinum from Corsair. It's got two 1080s on there. The X99, quad channel, I mean, you name it. It's a pretty high-end system, including a fully custom 360 loop on there. But I figured we'll start this experiment by taking the same work uh, project that you guys saw on Friday, the whole vlog of putting together the desks and things. I'm gonna render both of them simultaneously on both these machines. Now they are not perfect copies of the OS. The OS on the test bench has got, you know, it's stuff on there and this OS is a fresh install when I did that. So that's one thing to mention, but I'm going to just kind of do a, just a dry run to see how uh, right off the bat, they actually compare to each other. The nice thing is though, both of these operating systems are pretty bare. The only thing that's on the workbench over here is Premiere and then some games that I do my benchmarks on. And the same thing going for the system behind me, a brand new fresh install with some of the benchmark games that you guys saw in the 1800X review, as well as Premiere. So they're very, they're very bare bones. There's not a lot of bloatware anything on there actually. But the reason why I'm using the 5960X and not the 6900K for this test is they are pretty much the same CPU. One is Ivy Bridge E, one is Broadwell E. They're very minor differences. Uh, I do have two 6900Ks that we'll be using to build additional systems for the suite here, but this one's already put together. They're about the same thing, so I'm just gonna let them go. Now something else I kind of troubled myself with trying to figure out how I want to handle is overclocking. You guys know the 1800X is not the overclocking monster that we were hoping it was. Most people are only getting 3.9 out of them. Some people are getting 4.0 and very few people are getting 4.1. That's only a couple hundred megahertz difference between the two and it's only about 300 megahertz overclock from base. So yeah, not too sure how I wanna handle that because my 5960X is stable all the way up to 4.5. And obviously having a 500 megahertz advantage on that chip would probably push it into the lead. But then again, that's another selling point too, right? Overclocking ability, stability, that's something you guys should should consider. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm going to downclock the 5960X to 4.2. Actually, I've got a better idea. I will clock both of them at 4.0, and then, because that's as far as my 1800 can go, and then I will clock my 5960X to 4.5, and then we'll see how much of an improvement there actually was. So anyway, let's go ahead and start taking a look at what it's like working uh, in Premiere with the 1800X. So here's a timeline from Friday's vlog. In fact, it's very, very basic. It's just drop and drag of the MP4 uh, files directly off my Sony AX33. Uh, but even, even though this has no adjustment layers or crazy transitions or color correcting, usually if you did any sort of timeline scrubbing or moving around the timeline on a system that's just slow or sluggish, then it tends to be a pretty bad experience where you would click something on the timeline and then this would, the preview screen would take time to catch up, but even scrubbing is really fast. We're playing everything back at full resolution. It's not smoking anymore. It's idle, as smooth as can be. Real time. It's seriously, it's like, it's like pew changing those light bulbs to the MR16 LED. It's kind of fun though. Get so what if we add some sort of uh, adjustment layer on there? In fact, let's do like a two strip on there. Something that's kind of crazy, like some sort of crazy LUT. We'll, we'll do something very dramatic like that. That's the Alexa default 
uh, Log C2 Rec 709. Obviously, it's a very contrasty LUT. Somewhere we got the desk out. But you can see it has no problem moving Somewhere. around there. To have this company and. And check this out <laughs> AC vents that blow. <laughs> Goes full time uh, next end of next month ish. Wow. So, yeah, obviously, moving around the timeline is pretty <laughs> painless. <laughs> That, that's the, I mean, when it comes to rendering, you can click render and walk away and do something else if it takes a while, but the working within the timeline, if that's laggy and jumpy and it's just terrible, then you just sit there and think, my God, I hate editing because I can't keep up with what I'm trying to do. I use a lot of shortcuts and I tend to move around the timeline a lot and very quickly. Not the other, the window. But it's having no problem even playing it back at full resolution. This is actually a 1080p project though that I upscale to 4K. Uh, in my render, so that'll be adding some rendering time as well. So the next thing to do here is going to be the actual render test where I compare it to the 5960X. All right, so here's the Ryzen system. You can see right here we're using the YouTube 2160p or 4K preset. It's a 40 megabit per second uh, VBR. It's a variable bitrate one pass. Uh, this is actually how I do all my videos, if you want to know the truth. And then we're not using any maximum render quality. We're not using previews or anything like that. And if we come over here to the Intel system, you can see it is exactly the same settings here, 2160p. We have the exact same uh, project here with the exact same two strip adjustment layer on there. And we've got all the same settings selected. So what I've got to do now is I've got to try and hit enter at the exact same time on both of these. And then we are going to run the stopwatch. So three, two, one, go and start on the stopwatch. All right, so immediately this one says, 26 minutes, 25. They're kind of balancing out. It kind of goes up and down when it first starts. They both tend to do that. So that one says 26-ish minutes. Over here on the Intel, showing 23 minutes. And they are clocked identical. Let's keep that in mind. Anyway, we're just gonna let these go. We'll see which one finishes first. This one seems to be about three minutes slower at the moment, but we'll just let them go and see what happens. Oh, that's not good. Well, there's that. Here we go, round two, 5960X. That was my bad, actually. When I set the multiplier to 40, I had already reset the defaults on this before I moved it, and I forgot to put the voltage up. So it was trying to run 4.0 at stock volts. That's not gonna work. So there we go again, test render, 2160p 4K for YouTube preset, 40 megabit. We're ready to export. So here we go. Three, two, one, render, and they're going. Okay, so this one's showing 24 minutes, 32 seconds. But remember, like I said in the first attempt, it's gonna kind of bounce around a little bit there. So this is Intel showing about 24 minutes to render. And just like before, this one's showing approximately 26 minutes to render. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna let these go and I'll show you which one finishes first. And what we're concerned with here is the gap between the two, right? Well, so far they're maintaining about a three minute gap between the two of them. That's pretty consistently about three minutes. See, this is still showing 21 minutes, 42 seconds to go. And this one's showing 19, well, just hit 19 minutes. Since I know it's gonna come up, I'm also gonna show the GPU usage right here. Obviously, both of the Titan Xs are being used in this system here, but these are Titan X Maxwell cards, which are actually very comparable to the 1080. This is not the TI, this is just a regular 1080. And you can see over here on the usage, it's very, very comparable. Although it seems to be a little bit more inconsistent here on the Intel system. 33% uh, maxing out on GPU two and 26% maxing out on GPU one. Whereas over here on the AMD system, you can see right here, they are utilizing it pretty damn consistent. 37 and 37, yeah. So I just wanted to show that, that yes, indeed, the uh, GPUs are doing a little bit of something. So we got 13 minutes and 16 seconds left to go in the AMD system. And over here, we've got 10 minutes and 25 seconds left to go in the Intel system. So what's interesting about that is the AMD system actually closed the gap slightly. I mean, it's still about uh, just under three minutes apart now. That one just hit 13 minutes and this one's at 10 minutes, 12 seconds to go. So yeah, this one had fallen behind about as much as four minutes and now it's closed it in to just under three minutes. This is getting good. This graph line on the bottom right here, this is CPU usage. Uh, so it's sitting, as you can see, it tends to hover in the upper 70s to low 80s. Sometimes it dips, sometimes it goes up, but obviously it's fluctuating around. 
Um, pretty similar story over here on the Intel system. It's fluctuating around between the 70s and 80s. All right, the Intel system is finishing up. It's got a couple seconds left right here. And it usually takes a few seconds once it's done for it to kind of pop up and say it's done. See, I don't consider it done until that little thing is finished. Does that make sense? The AMD system, if you're wondering, has got two minutes and 30 seconds left over there. But still waiting for this to say it's done. And that's where the timer is. So far, the timer is sitting at 25, 28. And I'm still waiting for it to finish. So you can see the timer when it said 23, ah, there we go. Now the AMD rig is still showing one minute and 40 seconds left. And you can see down here, it actually took 25 minutes and 35 seconds for the Intel rig to complete. And now what we're measuring here on lap two, technically is the time difference between Intel, the Intel system and the AMD system. Okay, the AMD rig has just finished. And just like before, I'm not going to count it as done until the screen a little window pops off. And so far you can see the difference here is about two minutes. We're crossing the two minute mark right now. You can see my reflection. Sup, sup internet, sup. There we go, 28.05. So the difference between the two here was two minutes and 30 seconds, as you can see, between the Intel system and the Ryzen system. So what I did now with the Intel system was I went ahead and overclocked it to 4.5 gigahertz since I know that that's what my 5960X was capable of. All the same settings as before. I'm just kind of curious as to what the difference in the initial speed is going to be. I see it already, well, as you can see, it didn't really change much. 21 minutes. So it really came down, I don't know, a minute and a half-ish for five, an extra 500 megahertz for about a minute and a half. Now that's actually the first direct comparison I've actually done with any of my workflow stuff with Ryzen. And I think now seeing that two minutes and 30 seconds difference between a $1,000 CPU and a $500 CPU is obviously worth it. I mean, that's less than 10%. We're talking, it's more like 8% of a difference between the performance of these two CPUs for 50% additional cost for Intel it's really becoming hard to justify that. Now, the only reason I'm even gonna be building the 6900K systems is because I already have the parts, but we're gonna be obviously building some future Ryzen systems too, especially the Ryzen 5 being out, and I've still got the 1700X and 1700 system. There's a lot to be done, and it's an exciting time for PCs once again. Now, I hope this answers at least some of the preliminary questions people have about how Ryzen performs for content creators. I think that's been the thing a lot of people have been saying, it's for content creators, for content creators, but not many people have actually shown a direct comparison between the two. Now, obviously something like a 6950X like I'm using in Skunk Works just obliterates both of these CPUs, but at $1,700 and up, it's a pretty poor bargain. I think that goes without saying. Now, obviously this test isn't as directly comparable apples to apples as I would have liked. Ideally, I would have had two Titan X Maxwell cards on the test bench, but I don't have those on air. This one's on air, one's on water. So I, that's why I have two 1080s in there. But in terms of direct comparison, the Ryzen system probably had a little bit of an edge when it comes to GPU performance because there's more CUDA cores in the Titan X Maxwell than there is in the GTX 1080. Uh, but the 1080 has a speed benefits with a higher base clock than the Titans do. But the clock performance is a little bit less important as just the CUDA performance overall when it comes to Premiere. That's a whole different subject though. But I will be using Ryzen specifically for all of my workflow with bringing you guys videos for the next 30 days. So that will give me a real good experience as to what it's like. Now I'm hoping with BIOS improvements going forward, we might be able to see a little bit better overclocking. I'm also hoping for as to the roof made a popping sound, that's kind of scary. But anyway, I hope that answers some of your preliminary questions about how it actually compares to the eight core 16 thread Intel CPUs uh, for content creators. Now, live streaming is something else I'm gonna be doing in these next 30 days because I plan on doing some games and stuff while live streaming. So that will give me a pretty good indication of what it's like to game, render, and stream on the same system uh, when it comes to the 1800X. So yeah, I'm looking, I'm actually looking forward to that. It's been a long time since so I've done any gaming stream. 
because my internet at home sucks, but obviously here at the office, it is a whole lot better with that fiber. Okay, I'm gonna go now. If you guys have got something specific you kind of want me to play with, with Ryzen over the next 30 days, that doesn't include like Linux distros or VMs or you know virtual machines, because I don't really do any of that. I have no reason to do any of that with my workflow. But if there's something specific in terms of like content creator wise that you're interested in, let me know down in the comments or better yet, head on over to Twitter, uh, at Jay's Two Cents and give me some direction on what you guys want me to do uh, moving forward with the Ryzen stuff. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.